In this video, we're going to go over the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. Activation of the parasympathetic nervous system produces what we call the rest and digest response, whereas activation of the sympathetic nervous system results in the fight or flight response. These two responses are essentially opposites, so we often discuss the antagonistic control of these two nervous systems. What this is referring to is the fact that these two nervous systems essentially target many of the same organs, but activation of the two systems result in opposite effects in the organs. In this diagram, you can see a fairly comprehensive list of the effects of activating the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems on many of the organs in the body. For example, you can see that activation of the sympathetic nervous system results in pupil dilation. And this makes sense because if an animal is in the woods in the dark and it's running away from a predator, it wants to dilate its pupils to let more light into its eyes so it can see better and be able to better escape. When the animal is just resting and digesting, of course it has no need to dilate its pupils, so activation of the parasympathetic nervous system results in pupillary constriction. Similarly, if the animal is running away from a predator, it's going to want to dilate its bronchioles so it can breathe oxygen more quickly, and also it wants to increase its heart rate so it can deliver oxygenated blood to its skeletal muscles more quickly. Again, this is not necessary when an animal is resting and digesting, so the bronchioles are constricted in the parasympathetic nervous system, and the heart rate is also decreased. The parasympathetic nervous system, since it drives the rest and digest response, of course it's going to stimulate digestion. So this is going to include driving motion of the gastrointestinal tract, essentially moving the food particles along and breaking them down. It's also going to stimulate the release of bile from the gallbladder, as well as pancreatic enzymes from the pancreas. When you're in a fight or flight response, you certainly don't want to be digesting food, so activation of the sympathetic nervous system inhibits digestion. For the bladder, the sympathetic nervous system will relax the bladder, whereas the parasympathetic nervous system will constrict the bladder. And finally, this is exclusive for the sympathetic nervous system, activation of the sympathetic nervous system will stimulate the adrenal medulla to release epinephrine and norepinephrine. This is particularly important because epinephrine and norepinephrine are hormones released in the bloodstream that actually drives a lot of these sympathetic responses we just discussed. Finally, a last important distinction between the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems are the neurotransmitters involved. So, both systems involve a preganglionic and a postganglionic neuron. The preganglionic neuron synapses on the postganglionic neuron that then synapses on the effector organs. In the parasympathetic nervous system, the preganglionic and postganglionic neurons both use acetylcholine as the neurotransmitter. In the sympathetic nervous system, the preganglionic neuron uses acetylcholine as the neurotransmitter, but the postganglionic neuron secretes norepinephrine. It's of course important that the postganglionic neurons in these two systems are secreting different neurotransmitters, and that's because they're acting on the same effector organs. So by releasing different neurotransmitters, the effector organs can express receptors for each, and by responding to each type of neurotransmitter, the organ is able to drive opposite responses.